afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for, uh, for coming here. My name is Tom West. I am a developer uh, and solutions architect based uh, in the north of Leeds at a company called Converging Data. I, um, I started uh, developing uh, in a program language called Progress quite a while ago, moved over uh, to management, and now I, start, and now I typically develop on a platform called Splunk. Any, is there anyone that's used Splunk, got Splunk, anything? Excellent. And if you want to use Datadog or Elk or anything along those lines? No? Nope. Well, excellent. Right, so you can, you're kind of going to see exactly where I'm going to go with this. Uh, along with working, I've gone and de developed uh, six, uh, 13 or so apps at the moment uh, with over 1,600 downloads. The main one that I've gone and uh, my most popular one is the integration between Splunk and GitLab. So you can download that right now. That is free. Uh, if you're using Splunk, if you don't, you can get a free copy of that and get it all downloaded so that you can integrate that with your data. So as I said, I work for a company called Converging Data. We're a Splunk partner, reseller, professional services provider. Uh, we've got around 10 architects and we work in quite large uh, uh, spaces. So we work in uh, healthcare, financial services, and uh, we do some quite innovative and different things. And one thing that I want to show, sh talk to you about today is uh, why you might want to use something like uh, a data tool where you would typically throw your application logs for, develop for DevOps. Why am I here to, to talk about that? Well, typically those tools are generally available. They're generic in terms of what data you can add in there. The APIs for, data, for DevOps tools, GitLab, GitLab is one of the best that I've gone and used. It's really well documented. It's easy to access. The format of the response is quite easy. And you can just pull that in. It's not particularly difficult to do. Um, and then you can start to identify patterns with your, with your data, just like you can do with inbuilt uh, reporting within GitLab, within any other DevOps tools that you do use, but you can then also apply that reporting to your application logs uh, and security incidents to then enrich that further and all of a sudden you've got everything all in one place, which is quite nice and it's ecosystem agnostic, so you can, it doesn't matter whether you're using, uh, whether you're already using GitLab for everything, whether you're trying to move over and use GitLab for everything, if you've got legacy projects, we heard earlier on about uh, uh, how companies, uh, like large companies, they're using um, GitLab for a lot of their things, but struggling to get data to, to, to merge everything into GitLab, and this would be a solution for that. So that's enough about kind of the concept. Really, what I want to do today is actually show you we've done this. So right here, what you can see on the uh, on the screen is something that we've de developed within Splunk. But if you don't want to use Splunk, you can use exactly the same methods with whichever tool set is that you do use. And what we're showing here is that we've got four projects which we're currently coming in. We're tracking plan, quality, and commit areas of, uh, of your development lifecycle. And we've got four projects, like I say, we've got three that we're actually tracking plan information, one where we're checking quality, and we've got three for commits. Now, that's all kind of, you know, uh, there's nothing particularly exciting there until I say that commit we're moving, at, we're moving over our data at the moment. So we were using Bitbucket, we're now using GitLab. So one of those projects on there is actually uh, is, is Bitbucket, the other two are, uh, are GitLab. But it doesn't say which one's which, it just says, right, there's, there's the status of my, uh, my repositories, my projects at that particular time. And we're even able to see a timeline of how many commits were going on. Now this is dev data, so um, you, the, the timeline's not particularly interesting. If you've got it into your own organization, I suspect that it's gonna be a lot more interesting and entertaining. Um, but then what we're able to do after we've gone and summarized it is still produce some of the details that you get off the back of that. So we've got, to, um, so we're tracking Trello, we're tracking Sonicube, and we're tracking GitLab. All three of them are entirely different ecosystems. And there are, inter there are integrations with different DevOps tool sets across them. We've gone and seen that already today. But we're just pulling all that data into one place and actually able to report on that. And we can see for this one, which is GitLab, we've got two commits within the time period we've gone as specified, and we can see actually an activity timeline. And this is just pulling in the activities uh, that, that we've got straight out of the API from the GitLab API uh, ready and available. But we're not saying this is something that you have to manage totally separate. This is just automated, basically cron jobs, calling the API, pulling the data in, and, uh, and, and putting some visuals in front of it 
the thing that you probably can't see, certainly at the back, is that there's a table right at the bottom there. So we can click on that table, we can click on that time chart on that graph, and it's going to go and show, right, these are all the time, these are all the commits, these are all the activities that happen at this particular point in time. And you can select that table, and it's not going to show you any further information within Splunk or within Elastic or whichever tool you're using. It's going to take you straight to GitLab to actually show you. Because uh, why would why would we do anything more? GitLab is the best place. That's what you're using for your tool set. Why would you not just go there and have a look at what it is that you want to have a look at? So it's really powerful just being able to just pull those bits of information just all into one place. And what I want to do as well, just to kind of prove that it's not just me saying something, it's just high, uh, it's just theoretical. This screenshot, and it looks very, very similar, is actually Bitbucket. So this is actually telling me this is, a, this is a totally different project. We're getting it in the same screen, in the same way, but this is Bitbucket. So this is our le legacy project that for some reason we can't move across, and we're just showing it in exactly the same way, exactly the same method in terms of making it look really really standard, really, uh, uh, and then linking into that tool set as well. So it kind of eliminates that problem, or helps eliminate it to some degree, in a totally different way. And it means that you're not having to have as much of a, you're not feeling as though you're under pressure to get everything moved over onto a, into an ecosystem as quickly as possible. You can, you can do it at times that are a lot easier for you. It's easier to manage that process. And the last thing, like I say, I try and do talks where I have takeaways. So in this case, check out what's already available. And I would always say, whichever tool set you're using, check what's already available. I guarantee there's going to be integrations and things already available. In this case, you can, if you're wanting to take, check out those screenshots and everything in more detail, go to splunk.com and you can get a free license. Go to, there's a website called Splunkbase, which is their app store. You can go on there right now. There are integrations for, we've, we've gone and done them for GitLab, for Bitbucket, for Trello, for Sonacube. The app that I've gone and shown you a couple of screenshots of right now will be live in 20 minutes time. Uh, which is entirely deliberate. Uh, so, uh, but the main thing is take advantage of the APIs. Understand what your own objectives and goals are. If you're going to write this and do this from scratch, understand what it is that you can get from the APIs in the first place. It may be that you can't do something that you really want to do, but you can get 90% of the way. And if it's something really big, then break it down into really small chunks and do it that way. Go, right, okay, so I've got six, seven different projects that I different tool sets that I want to integrate, I'll just focus on the first one and get that in and make sure you're happy with that. But make sure that's the most valuable one and then see what you can do based on that and go from there. Don't just aim for the moon, just do it in steps on the way. That's just kind of basic principles. I'm, I don't really want to teach you to suck eggs. And then um, the last thing really is just check out, we're, we're building integrations and tool sets and new apps all the time within, uh, Within six months, six, seven months I've been in the company, we've developed seven different apps that are actually on the App Store. Like I said, we've got over 1,600 downloads now. I personally have got over 13 uh, apps available. So check out what our, uh, what our latest news is on convergingdata.com. Uh, we hope to add even more data uh, and more uh, value later on. Uh, certainly the next thing that we're looking to do is to actually uh, is to, is to add alerting back in. So if you've got security products or things like that and you've got events that come in, then being able to actually post out, being able to automate things like merge requests and, uh, and, and production of pipelines, even rollback of code, that's all the stuff that we're looking to do next, that's next in the pipeline. And again, this is all going to be free. We're not going to charge anyone for you to be able to download it. Um, it's, it's just something that we, again, as part of like an open source thing, we're just making sure that we give it back to you as something, almost a thank you from me because I've learned an awful lot from the community, so therefore I want to give back a lot to the community. And this is one of the best ways in which I can go and do that. And that's, that's me. Thank you very much.